you know, any time you get four players that really are, you know, really good, and they get enshrined in Cooperstown on Sunday, it's just got to be how you lead off your show on Monday, right? Good morning, everybody, and welcome once again to Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports. It was great, first of all. Before I get to the legends that went into Cooperstown yesterday, may I just say before I begin, it's great to hear a legend, our legend, Lenny, back with us after his exciting trip. Lenny, great job this morning. Uh, it's good to hear you back on the air. I had a conversation with Lenny uh, last week on the phone, and I just want to make sure Lenny was having a great time. And of course, my suspicions were confirmed. He was, and he shared some of that with us this morning. Uh, you're talking about a guy who has seen players come and go and come and go again, and uh, what a great friend. And Lenny, you are way too kind with your compliments of my podcast this morning, but uh, we do try, and Lenny set the bar high, so uh, we just got to follow and, and go with it, right? Here we are. Uh, let's do this. Let's talk about those enshrinements. First of all, you had Edgar Martinez, Roy Halladay, then you had New York Yankee players, you know, Mike Mussina, who did not go in with a cap, and rightfully so. Mussina played 10 years in Baltimore and accomplished a great career there, then went on to the Yankees and was extremely successful in the Bronx for eight years. So Mussina, and I heard this yesterday, maybe you've heard it, uh, Mussina had 270 career wins as a starting pitcher in 18 seasons. Do you know the average number of wins for Hall of Fame pitchers? Let me tell you, the number is 270. So, how about that? You've seen a right on pace with others who have been enshrined before him. Of course, Lenny asked the question this morning, and I, I've got to tell you, Lenny, I, I, I didn't really cheat, but I'm, I'm, I'm at Supercuts getting my hair cut uh, Friday. And uh, they're talking about the Hall of Fame, and they show Edgar Martinez, and it showed his statistics against Mariano Rivera. You talking about taking someone to the woodshed? Edgar Martinez owned. You, you, you think Steinbrenner and the Yankees own um, Mariano, but no, Edgar Martinez did. Hit way over 500 against him, 20 more at bats. It was an incredible career for Edgar Martinez and an incredible career against one of the all-time greats, the only unanimous player to ever enter the Hall of Fame, Mariano Rivera. Roy Halladay left us too soon, but Halladay with great career for both the Blue Jays and the Phillies, winning a World Series in Philadelphia. His wife took the podium yesterday, did a fantastic job, and she tributes her husband and his career, and then, of course, finally, Mariana Rivera, the, the greatest reliever of all time. And I know Lee Smith went in yesterday from a veteran's perspective, and Lee Smith was an incredible closer in his own right. He pitched a long time. Mainly, we remember him as a Chicago Cub. He had his early and great years there. But when you talk about Rivera and you ta start talking or trying to compare other relievers to him, he truly is the yardstick. He is the measuring cup by which all relievers, both past and present and future, will be judged and graded. How do they compare to Mariano? So, congratulations, yes, to all four, Edgar, Roy Holiday, Mike Messina, Mariano Rivera, entering Cooperstown. Their bus will be on the wall. And that's a place that if you get a chance to go, incredible place to visit. It's baseball history at its very best. And no matter which team you pull for, you walk. You know, that place is just the shrine of all who have gone before us. And so next year's class will feature a, a visitor there yesterday, Derek Jeter. I thought it was really interesting. Derek Jeter... Uh, Jorge Posada, Tino Martinez, and Andy Pettit, all there to uh, encourage and support their former teammate. And so 
next year, Jeter's on the ballot. So I'll ask this question as we get into the show today. Is Jeter unanimous next year now that we've had a unanimous pick in Mariana Rivera? Or does someone vote not for Derek Jeter entering the Hall of Fame? I think there are so many players over the history of the Hall of Fame who should have been unanimous picks to enter the Hall of Fame. Okay, we can start and end, but let's just talk about a few. How about Babe Ruth? Ty Cobb? Modern Day? Okay, Tom Seaver? Ken Griffey Jr.? Johnny Bench? I'm not trying to focus on a team. I'm talking about players. You look at the 70s. Reggie Jackson? And whether you are a fan of these players or not, there is no disputing what they accomplished on the baseball field. And so, I'm glad Rivera was unanimously selected. Jack Youngblood thinks, and I agree, Jeter is unanimous. There's so many who before us should have been unanimous. You can't revote. There will be players in the future who will probably be unanimous. But here's what I think distinguishes Mo from everyone else. Lots of turnout yesterday in Cooperstown. You're right, Andrea. But I think what distinguishes Mo, and I think why it's so symbolic that he's unanimous, is he, in my opinion, the best all-time at his position. So when we talk about Hall of Fame best all-time at a position, we can debate... Was Johnny Bench the greatest catcher of all time? Was Yogi Berra the greatest catcher of all time? Up for debate, right? Was Whitey Ford the greatest left-handed pitcher of all time? Or was it Sandy Koufax? Or was it Warren Spahn? There, There are perspectives and arguments to be made for why certain players could arguably be the best all time at their position But really, when you get down to it, is there anyone in the same class with Mariana Rivera? And I don't think there is. So, congratulations to the four. It'll be interesting to see who goes in next year, whether Jeter is unanimous or not. Which leads us to our standings. And now, we are nine days away from our trade deadline. I want to talk, as we get into the show about some possible trade candidates, teams who are in, teams who are out. I want to talk about, I'm going to pose you a a rookie question, a prospect question. And looking in the chat room, let's give some good mornings before we start doing any of that, okay? Andrea, beer man, Colorona Cyclonus, I love that name, Colorona. Cam, DK Loosh. Doug Boyle, Jack Youngblood, Lenny's with us. That guy, thank you guys for being with me this morning. Thank you for supporting Lenny. I know everybody was excited to hear Lenny back. And now we're just continuing to roll it along. Jack Youngblood says the only guy that competes with him there is Hoffman, but he isn't better than Mo. I agree. And and though Hoffman had regular season numbers, they were only they were close to Rivera's. But when you then take a look at the postseason numbers, the ERA, the saves, but four, of course, everyone is human, right? I mean, no hitter bats a 1,000 in the World Series. Mantle had 18 World Series home runs, but he got out some of the time. In fact, Mantle got out more than he got on in World Series games. But if you took away the 1997 home run to Cleveland's Sandy Alomar Jr., which eliminated the Yankees from the playoffs in 1997. And if you take away the drawn-in infield bloop over Jeter's head by Luis Gonzalez in the 2001 Game 7 World Series, Rivera was almost perfect. Almost perfect. And then you think about how many World Series is with the Yankees Great, Thank you, Andrea. It's great to be here with you. I love this. I hope it shows. I really do. But how many World Series do the Yankees win in the 90s and 2000s 
if Rivera is not on that team. You think about 96 when Wetland was the closer, but it was Rivera who dominated the 7th and 8th innings. He pitched two innings back then. You think about the 98, 99, 2000 teams. And, and the Yankees really just ran through the playoffs in those years. 2009. Rivera. Okay, so... And even in years when they didn't make the World Series or did make the World Series and didn't win, the 2003 playoffs against the Red Sox. Rivera's brought in for extra innings and through three innings in that game, holding the Red Sox to no runs. If Rivera doesn't do that, the Red Sox go to the World Series in 2003. Okay? So... Congratulations. Let's look at the standings. National League. Atlanta. Here we are the Monday before two. There's one more Monday before the trade deadline. We got nine days. We're in single digits. The Braves are six and a half games ahead of the Washington Nationals this morning. They defeated the Nationals yesterday seven to one. And you know how I like to do this. I like to talk about some of the players who contributed uh, as we go through some of these key games. Freddie Freeman last night. Did you watch the game? Freddie Freeman, in that 7-1 to one win, he went 3-for-5. Freeman's hitting 300 on the year. He drove in a run. His 26th double. Freeman now has 78 RBIs on the year. Other key hitters. Ronald Acuna Jr., 2-for-4 with his 24th home run. It was in the eighth inning off McGowan with one on and one out. Marcakis went one for three, drove in two. Donaldson, two for four, hit his 23rd home run last night. His sixth, in the sixth inning rather, off of Ross with nobody on and no out. It was really a big win for the Braves. And I didn't even mention Freddie Freeman with his fourth stolen base. And when you think about stolen bases, you might think of a lot of players getting bags, but not Freddie Freeman. But he picked up his fourth last night. But I think what the hitting was great off of national pitching. But the thing that really stood out last night, off the IL, Kevin Gossman, who I have, yes, I have told you he's garbage. But last night he was fine linen. Seven innings pitched. Five hits, no walks, only one earned run, eight strikeouts. He only threw 83 pitches, and 63 of those were for strikes. So in seven innings last night, he only threw 20 balls, 63 strikes. An incredible game, a game the Braves needed. Ross pitched for the Nationals, went into the sixth inning, gave up three Struck out six. Hitting-wise, not a lot going on. Only six hits for the Nats. Two by Suzuki. No other player had more than one. Rendon went hitless. Soto went hitless. Soto's been cold. Lenny touched on that in his show. Robles, the second game in a row without a hit. Six-and-a-half game lead. Scherzer, hopefully back this week. That back must have been a lot worse than they thought. Or it must have been a lot worse, obviously, than they told us it was. The Phillies are seven and a half out. They beat Pittsburgh yesterday two to one in what I guess you would say is a pitcher's duel. Josh Bell hitting under 200 the last week. Pittsburgh not scoring runs. Falling back in the division. Falling out of the wild card race. They're now behind all the teams in the National League West in the wild card race. The Phillies, well, Hoskins hit a go-ahead homer in the 11th inning. That was the game winner. He went two for four yesterday. He's hitting 259 on the year. But the pitching was the story. And the big story in Philadelphia yesterday was Drew Smiley. How many of you looked at the lineups yesterday, if you play daily or if you own Pirates in season long, and you saw Drew Smiley in his over 8 ERA, and you were like, in daily or in season long, let me put as many 
Pirates in the lineup as I can. And if you did that, guess what? You lost. 